Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the bride has now arrived at the church. Welcome to Maureen and James's wedding. Can I please ask you all to stand? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to James and Maureen's wedding. And on this happy occasion, let us worship God together by singing to his praise in the words of Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd.
Could the congregation please be seated? We are gathered here in the presence of God to witness the joining together of Maureen McLennan and James McRae in Christian marriage, to share with them in their joy and to promise them our support and love. Marriage is a gift of God and a means of grace. In the lifelong union of marriage, we can know the joy of God who made us in his own image, male and female. Marriage is founded in God's loving nature and in his covenant of love with us in Jesus Christ. Husband and wife in giving themselves to each other in love reflect the love of Christ for his church. Marriage is honorable and holy. It is founded in the loving nature of God. It is part of God's purpose for humanity and was provided by him for the comfort and happiness of man and woman and for the welfare of human society. Marriage was blessed by our Lord's gracious presence at the marriage in Cana of Galilee and is consecrated as a symbol of the union between Christ and his church. Could I invite the congregation to stand, please? <clears throat> Maureen and James, as a seal to the vows that you are about to make, will you take each other by the right hand? James, before God and in the presence of your families and friends, do you, James, give yourself to Maureen to be her husband and take her now to be your wife? Do you promise to love her, to be faithful to her for as long as you both shall live? Maureen, before God and in the presence of your families and friends, do you, Maureen, give yourself to James to be his wife and take him now to be your husband. Do you promise to love him, to be faithful to him for as long as you both shall live? As a token of the covenant into which you have entered into, these rings are given and received. May they be to you a sign of the unending love that you have pledged each other today. By this sign, you take each other to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live. Since you have covenanted together in marriage and have declared your love for each other before God and these witnesses, I proclaim you to be husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, no man may separate. James, you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Take each other by the hand. <laughs> James and Maureen, may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, uphold, and keep you all the days of your life together. May he grant you the riches of his grace that you may please him both in body and in soul and living together in faith and in love. May together receive the blessings of eternal life. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for James and Maureen and for the vows that they have taken before God and before this congregation of their family and their friends. Our simple prayer and wish for them is, Lord, that for every day of their life, from this day onwards, they may be as happy together as they are this day. All these things we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. We're going to sing together once again the hymn in Christ alone. Yeah. 
Congregation, please be seated, and I would invite the bridal party to take your seats. As well. We'll read a passage now from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians and chapter 13, where Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. 
But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. And we pray that God would bless a reading of his holy word to us today. Maureen and James, I'd like to reflect on the very last words of that great passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But the greatest of these is love. In fact, there are many texts that we could take from a passage like that. I think of the beginning of verse 8, which is also very true. Love never fails. The letters of Paul are full of uh, counsel and wisdom to a couple getting married. It's your big day. It's a day that you have been looking forward to for a very long time a day that you'd be forgiven for thinking wasn't going to come around. But here you are at last, and you're married. You're pledged your love to each other in this church before God and before your families and your friends today, a day that you will remember for the rest of your lives. Understandably, like most couples, it's a day when there's probably butterflies in the tummy and you've been feeling nervous and will still maybe feel nervous during the day. I always try and counsel couples uh, to try and focus on themselves, on each other, and if needs be on me uh, during the service at least. So focus in what is in front of you and focus on the person that is uh, you are marrying. That is what I've said to every couple, and I've often thought of what the Apostle Paul has said, uh, writing to the Philippians. He said, the one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, I press toward the goal. And so, Maureen and James, forget the things that are behind you just now, and there are plenty of things behind you, but don't worry about them for a time. Forget about everyone else. The greatest gift that God has given you today and the reason you are here is your love for each other. And you will, as a couple have received many wedding presents over the past while and maybe still will, the greatest gift that you are given, the greatest gift you receive, the greatest gift you give is your love for each other. The love that you pledged each other today. For as long as you both shall live, you have pledged that love. The greatest gift is not the crockery, the bed linen, the washing machine, whatever it may be. The greatest gift is the love that you have for each other and the love that is rooted in the love of Christ for you both. Love doesn't wear out. It doesn't go out of fashion. And I'd like to think very briefly of three things that we see that love is in this passage. In the first place, love is partnership. Paul shows us in 1 Corinthians 13 what love is and also what love is. And he says that love is patient, love is kind, love rejoices in the truth, love always protects, trusts, hopes, and perseveres, keeps on going. But what love isn't is just as important Love is not envious, love does not boast, love is not proud, love is not rude, love is not self-seeking, love does not get angry and keeps no record of wrongs. Love speaks of partnership, of a lifelong commitment to each other as a reflection of the love of God for his people. And from now on, and even long before now, you are a team. 
always spoken of us, James and Maureen, Maureen and James. People won't think of one without the other. People won't easily speak of one without the other, and that is how it should be. The love that the Apostle Paul speaks of here is a true partnership. A couple getting married, knowing and showing that the focus has shifted away from me and my to us and we. It's true. A true partnership rooted in the love of God for his children. And the statement that I read earlier said that marriage is founded in God's loving nature and in his covenant of love with us in Jesus Christ. The word covenant is simply an agreement, a contract. It speaks of partnership, but love also speaks of priorities. Paul says that love is kind. It isn't envious. It isn't proud. It isn't selfish. Loving someone else requires all of these things. Because love is a sign of maturity, of growing up, of leaving behind the self-centeredness of younger days. Paul says in uh, that wonderful verse at the end of the passage, when I was a child, I talked, thought, and reasoned as a child. And there may have been days uh, when you squabbled with your sister over dolls and toys, and maybe Maureen did too. <laughs> but the priority... The priority is no longer on me or mine, but on us. The priority is no longer to say it is mine. The priority is the love that says it is ours, to share in partnership and in commitment. And today, James and Maureen, you have made a public affirmation of love that shows that your priorities have changed. And other things are no longer as important as the person that you have married and given your vows to in front of God and these families and friends that are here as witnesses today. At this point in the service, it has been my practice always to, to give the, the groom a, a diary uh, with the day today's date marked on it. I'm not going to do that today because there's no reason, because I know James is so organized. <laughs> uh, he's just on the ball as far as that is concerned, and he's never going to forget his wedding anniversary, and I don't think Maureen will either. One tip as to how to remember your wedding anniversary, forget it once and you'll never forget <laughs> it again. I do remember reading a story about an old lady who, on her golden wedding anniversary, made it known that uh, when she was asked what the secret of a long and happy marriage was, she confided that on her wedding day, uh, she decided she would make a list of 10 of her husband's major faults, which for the sake of her marriage, she would overlook. And then... A guest asked her what some of these faults were, to which she replied, to tell you the truth, my dear, I never get, did get round to listing them. That lady had the right priority, keeping the main thing, the main thing. And today, in your commitment and in covenanting in love to each other today, you're showing that the main thing is for James Maureen and for Maureen. James. Love speaks of partnership. Love speaks of priorities. And finally, love speaks of permanence. Love never fails. Love is lasting. It doesn't come with an expiry date. Other things will pass away. Love never will. Other things may be temporary. But love is lasting and love is permanent. Because the source and the origin of the love that you have pledged for each other today is found in the heart and in the character of God. Love never fails. There's a wonderful verse in the book of the Song of Solomon. Many waters cannot quench love. And there will be times in your marriage when everything else seems to fail, but these words, remember them, love never fails. 
at this point in the service as well, I normally do give another book. I might not have a diary for you, but I do have a book that I'm going to give you. The same book as, as was given to Her Majesty the Queen, not exactly the same one, obviously, <laughs> but I'm giving you a copy of the Word of God, but on the day in which she was crowned Queen, the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland said to her, we present you with this book, the most valuable thing that this world affords. Here is wisdom. This is the royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. James and Maureen, on behalf of us all, I give you that copy of, word, of the word of God and pray that in it you may find continuing uh, truth and guidance and inspiration and hope and answer every day of your life together. And may God's word continue to guide you in your lives together today. And we pray that God would bless these thoughts upon his word. Let's pray together once again. Father, we thank you for the wonderful truth that the Apostle Paul could speak of there, that love never fails that uh, the greatest of all gifts, of all graces, is love. And we pray that the love that uh, Maureen and James have pledged each other today may continue to uh, grow within their hearts towards each other. May you bless them and their families from this day, that they may know that uh, your hand is upon them and that you might make your face to shine upon them now and at all times. We ask that you would go before us now and as we are so thankful to be together, to rejoice in this happy day, we pray that your blessing especially would be with this happy couple as they pledge their love to each other this day. Bless them, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. And at this point in the service, the happy couple, James and Maureen, are going to sign the marriage schedule and the other witnesses as well. Right, so... Uh, Do you want to sign it now or something? Yeah, let me Marine sign first, maybe. Ask McLennan for the last time. <laughs>
In a short time, uh, I'll invite you to stand to sing our closing praise, uh, Amazing Grace. Can I thank you all for coming here today? And just to let you know that teas are being served in the church hall for those wishing to attend after the service. Uh, the bus heading to the Cabrafe will be departing the car park at 14.45 sharp, quarter to three. And those who have indicated that they would like a seat on the bus should be on the bus by 14.40 at the latest. Uh, all guests are requested to arrive at the Cabrafe by 15.45 for photographs and the lineup will commence at 16.45 at quarter to five. We sing together and please remain standing for the benediction afterwards. Amazing grace, how sweet the sight. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit rest upon and remain with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.